when a mommy plane and a daddy plane love each other, and sometimes even if they don't, Hi, welcome back to the Spanless Gamer, where I'm playing every Sega Master System game. And if it's the first time here, please click like, subscribe, and notify. If I can get to 500 subscribers, uh, I will continue on with the 16-bit system uh, after this. Uh, and our three, our four games today are Bomber Raid, Captain Silver, Cyborg Hunter, and Double Dragon. And our first game is Bomber Raid. And look at that, it's the first non-Sega Master System looking box. Uh, it might be the third, third party game. Uh, published game we've played on this system. Bomber Raid. Who has Mach 6 speed? Hella bad, wep hella bad weapons. Hella bad. And love for wasting dweebs and tanks. Oh, you do. You're trying too hard. It's the gnarliest fighter bomber game ever. So hot it feels like a coin op. Why? Two mega power means we cram a lot more game into the cartridge so you get more action for your money. Eh, trying too hard there, Activision. Destroy the battleship. Goodbye. Oh, it's a shmup. It's a shmup where I'm dead again already. That never happens to me. I am good at shmups. I'm not good at shmups. Take that ship. One! Ooh! I have a baby plane. Oh. I had a baby plane. When a mommy plane and a daddy plane love each other, and sometimes even if they don't, they get a baby plane. Let's read it. Uh, graphics, we're gonna give those a four and a half. Uh, the sound was five, the music will give a five, story, eh, whatever, one, controls were okay, it's just shmup, funness, a four, doesn't hold my attention, a three, and just not into shmups, and overall it's going to get a five, seems like a pretty decent 1945s kind of shmup, or 1940, I should probably know 1942, 1941, 1940, whatever that game is, whatever year that takes place. Anyway, let's see what's next. Our next game today is called Captain Silver, and Captain Silver is a piratey guy, and he's fighting a skeleton piratey guy, and our vast you matey. Back of the box. You're Jack Avery, a lad with a taste for treasure and high adventure. In this hot Sega adventure, you are fast on the trail of the most feared sea pirate's treasure, Captain Silver. It doesn't matter that he's dead, his ghost goes on haunting the treasure, and all who try to find it with a bloodthirsty vengeance that it's chased strong men to their graves. But you have no fear, or do you? With a tattered old treasure map in your hand, you must track down the Sea Dog's Golden Horde, battling creatures both from this world and from beyond the grave. You'll start the game with your trusty cutlass and your wits. Fight well, and you'll be able to increase the power of your sword or purchase special powers to slow down the hands of time and make yourself temporarily invisible. Wield your cutlass well, and you'll face the ghost of the captain himself with a chance to own all his buried treasure. But fail in your quest, and you know what spirits will haunt you? Question mark. Rounds four. No booty jokes? Okay. Captain Silver! Arr. Scene one. Hello, I'm Jack Avery. I think this is a mascot convention that I have infiltrated. Bunch of furries. Apparently, we have a problem with that. My sword makes funny sounds. I don't like the looks of you. What happens when I spell Captain Silver? Hello? 
Oh. And. Oh, actually, let's get that. Pumpkins! Oh no! Okay, you have to duck to kill the pumpkin. Gotcha. Oh, I need the E. I don't need the P. Don't need an A. All I need now is the letter T, and good things will happen, because I have spelled a word! Hello, fairy. Fairies are usually good in games, right? Oh, I can shoot things now. Why is there a creepy clown? What? Yes! I have spelled the word! Nothing happened. I don't know what the hell that music guy was. I can spell. Nothing seems to happen when I do, but I can do it. Hmm. Yes, because that makes sense. <gasps> Yo, chop. I can get a fairy. I can get nothing because I don't have that much gold, but sure. Oh, now the werewolves float. I think this game should have tried to be more like Castlevania, a little darker in tone. Like, it's not a bad premise. I can see it being a very good Castlevania kind of side-scrolling game with, like, werewolves and stuff, but instead it's a little bit on the goofy side, considering the themes. Now I'm on a ship. A vast, you matey. A vast. Oh. That guy dead. Jack Avery. I'm not that guy. I have a name. I don't know why I spell my name. Actually, it's Captain Silver's name. My name is Jack Avery. Jack Avery. Go over here. Yes, now I'm flashing different colors. Does that mean I am invincible? Oh boy. Of course. Birds are bad. Oh. Well, I've seen enough of that. Graphics, uh, we'll give those a five. Sound was okay. We'll give that a four and a half. Music was okay. We'll give that a four and a half as well. Uh, Storyline, story's pretty cool. Five and a half there. Controls, uh, we'll give those a four and a half. They could be better. They could be worse. Funness. Uh, four does it hold my attention? A three and a half, and overall, we're gonna give it a four and a half. Uh, Captain Silver, kind of odd game, could have been pretty cool. Uh, I think just missed opportunity. Let's see what's next. Our next game today is called Cyborg Hunter, and it's another Activision game. Uh, pretty cool box art, Cyborg Hunter, very 1980s sci fi uh, thing going on there. That's pretty neat. I like that. Apparently you hunt cyborgs. The year, 2242. You're the toughest bounty hunter in the galaxy. You've amassed a fortune by defeating the most vicious creatures known to man. And now, deep inside enemy's cyborg fortress, you can almost taste your next paycheck. But there's a little work to be done before you cash in. Like blasting swarms of deadly cyborgs with your powerful psycho gun. Psycho gun turns them crazy. And a battle to the death showdown with Vipron, the vile cyborg leader. Prepare yourself for one explosive payday. Okay, let's uh, play it. Yes, digging the eighties techno sci-fi vibe. Oh, then you ruin it. 
Paladin, congratulations on entering the enemy base. Havoc, Bifron is in Area G. Don't forget to take the items in each area. First, get the shield in Area A, and then proceed onward. Why the clown music? The music in the title's opening is kind of cool. Stand at all. Hello? Open, shut. Open, shut. Man, that's a positive thing. Am I just stuck here forever? Well. Yes, I'm on floor one. I see there's like an elevator control up there, but I don't. How the hell do I do anything with it? Nothing seems to do anything! What a great game! Oh, how the hell do I do that? Alright, bubble gun. Screw you! Oh, he's still there. Oh, this thing I don't understand again. Okay, somehow figured out that. How do I leave? I'm on a different floor. That hurts. Wow. The gun would be nice. I'm a crappy bounty hunter if I don't even have my own gun. Oh. Cyber Hunter graphics. Uh, we'll give those a five and a half. Sound a four. Music. It's kind of goofy at points. Kind of cool. And other points. I'm very conflicted here. Uh, we'll give it a four. Some of the music I like. Some of it mm, sounds like a clown car. Story. Uh, we'll give that a three. It's just kind of a rip off of Metroid where you're a bounty hunter in space. Story. Um, yeah, controls. Uh, they're not so great. A three. I have no idea how that 3D elevator crap works and it is weird funness. Uh, we'll give that a three. It doesn't hold my attention. Uh, conceptually, I liked it. I thought I was going to like it. Three and a half there. And overall, it's going to get a... Yeah, we'll give it a four. Uh, no, three and a half. That was Cyborg Hunter. Let's move on to the last game of the day. Our final game today is Double Dragon. Needs no introduction. Sega's box art looks like this. Double Dragon. Okay. Back of the box. It's two-player Double Dragon. Oh, there's a dig on Nintendo. Uh, two-player Double Dragon for your Sega system, just like the arcade game. In a city destroyed by war and crime, you count on each other to survive. You are Billy and Jimmy Lee, the twins they call Spike and the Hammer. When it comes to martial arts, they're both street lethal, leaping kicks, knee smashes, judo throws. You are the masters. Now get ready for the biggest battle of the Black Warriors, meanest gang in the city. Has kidnapped Jimmy's girlfriend, Mary Ann. She's the bait and they're using her to lure you into their turf. You're going to get her back and take care of the Black Warrior gang once and for all. It's going to take every fighting skill you have. And if you make it to the headquarters of the Black Warriors, you'll face the greatest surprise of all. The leader of the gang it's your brother and let's play the game mission one punch mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah, double dragon. Um... I think, I mean, definitely more familiar with the NES version. Uh, I'm just trying to decide if I think this looks better or not. Backgrounds aren't as interesting. I think the enemy characters look better. The sprite work is better. Perhaps the background's not as much. Tonight on the BBC, that guy. Oh no. The doors have opened. Already? Oh no. Bobo, whatever your name is. One likes you. Do 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 do. I think the music's better on the NES too. Oh, this isn't bad. It's pretty cool actually. But I think the NES one is superior. Just more interesting things going on in the background, and I think the controls are a little bit better. Graphics, though, are pretty good, so we will give those a uh, 6. Sound, we will give a 5. Music, a 7.5. Story, uh, my favorite story in all video games, your girlfriend gets punched, save her. Uh, we'll give that a 4. Controls, um, We'll give that a five and a half. Funness, a six. Doesn't hold my attention, a five. I still prefer the NES one. But overall, Double Dragon on the Sega Master System gets a six. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next game.